But I was scrolling through Twitter a couple of days ago and I saw this post of Guillermo using the V0 service that Vercel has where he built out a simple calculator. And recently I kind of got access to the V0 um, private beta. So I wanted to kind of demo that on my channel. But not only that, this calculator post kind of threw me back to when I first started doing content creation. Five years ago, I made this tutorial on the Free Code Camp channel where I built a calculator and it looks like absolute garbage. So I wanted to basically take a trip down memory lane, see how quick V0 can kind of build a calculator. And then I'm going to try to build the same calculator without the functionality, just, just the UI, just the design using Tailwind. And in this video, it took me 20 minutes to make a buggy calculator with a bad UI. And I want to see if I can just rebuild what V0 kind of gives us. All right, so let's just go to V0. I'm going to say a calculator, just like Guillermo did in his post. Go ahead and click enter. And what this does behind the scenes is it's going to use AI to basically generate your React code. And I do believe the data set is trained on using like Shad CN components, which is the UI library that I actually use a lot in all my videos. So you'll get drop downs, you'll get buttons that all try to use some of those main components from what I understand. And I do think it might use Tailwind. So after it's done generating, you can see that it made like different variants. Um, this A variant obviously is not even usable. It's not accessible, but this B one looks pretty cool. It's also a C one as well. By the way, I want to say this is not a sponsored video for Vercel or ReZero. I just thought it was a cool application and make a good video content. So I'm just kind of demoing this for you all. So what you can do down here is you can actually type in prompt to change the buttons if you want to. So for example, let's say make the calculator in blue. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So basically the first one, the V0 iteration is like your first take on the prompt. And then it's going to basically create another iteration off of the first one and try to kind of style it based on what you want. You can tell it to add or remove buttons. It's very cool. So I think this V1 prompt is, is good enough. And once you have it, you can actually just click this code button and you get access to all the code. Now, one thing I want to point out, which I think is actually pretty cool as well, if you were to use this to generate like real web uh, components, like a header, footer, a hero banner, something like that, you can actually just copy this command and go over to your code editor and I'm going to go ahead and just run mpx v0 add. And then you get this like, I don't know, this, this little unique ID that represents the thing that you just created. And if you have the Shad CN UI already set up, you literally just click enter. It'll go ahead and automatically add in whatever dependencies. Notice that this depends on a UI card, depends on a UI button. And just by running this command, it's going to install those. So if I go over here and say components, we got the UI card right here and we got the UI button. Um, so now if I were to go back, there is a component. I think when I ran that command, it asked me what I want to call my component. For some reason, I just called it component, but I could potentially call it calculator. Um, this code is generated. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to rename this the calculator as well. Calculator. So now we have a component that we can just pull into any page. So if I were to go to like my main page here, and I'm going to go ahead and collapse that, and I'm going to pull in calculator. Let's go to my hosted application and here we have it. The exact same calculator that was generated for us using AI with Tailwind, with Shad CN components is now integrated into our application. Obviously there's no functionality, but uh, how long did it really take? If I wasn't talking through this video, this would have taken me maybe 20, 30 seconds to generate iteration zero and then iteration one. Pretty cool. So now what I want to do is I want to challenge myself. Can I build this exact same component by myself with my own skills and knowledge um, on another page. So I'm going to have uh, two tabs open. I have a calculator tab right here, which is where we're going to try to build this out. And then I'm going to have this as a reference. I'm going to switch to the light mode because I do think it has like a, a box shadow. Let's see how long this takes us. I'm going to go ahead and just start a stopwatch real quick. And again, I'm going to be talking throughout this video. So obviously it's going to take me a little bit longer as I'm kind of talking through stuff. So the first thing I want is a rectangle that has a drop shadow. So if I go to the code, Go to this calculator page. I'm going to make a div here and we're going to say drop shadow and I'm going to say hi here. Let's hopefully get a, a div with the drop shadow. I actually might want a box shadow, but I'm going to go ahead and just say like width of I'll say 200 pixels, height of 600 pixels. We won't worry about making it responsive or anything. Let's do a little bit of border. It looks like there's a border there. So I'll say like border blue 200. And off the bat, I don't know why there's no border. I think I need to say border one so I can actually like give it a size. Oh, I think border is not even anything. Let's do that. Okay, there we go. We got a border. 
I don't think using box drop shadow, maybe I want a box shadow. I think that might be what I want. I don't know. Um, anyway, I am kind of zoomed in, so let's just go ahead and fix that a little bit. I want to try to center this, so I think I can just give this a flex, justify content center like that. Um, it already has a flex, so let's just go ahead and delete that. There we go. Kind of. All right, so let's make the, the border radius, I'll, I'll make it rounded, so let's say rounded. Here we go. We can change the strength of the rounding, so I could say like extra large. Might make a little bit better. I think the width, maybe I should do like two, 260 to make it a little bit closer. We don't need to get it exact. I'm just trying to get it close enough. Um, for the shadow itself, I think we need more shadow. So if I go to the box shadow, I don't think box shadow is even a setting. I could just say shadow extra large. There we go. Um, I think the border might actually be like a gray. So we can kind of go back to that and we'll change that to a border blue of 50 or 100. That's probably good enough. So now we have like a top calculator part and we have like a bottom buttons part. So maybe we could make some type of div in here where I can do like a height of 50 pixels. And we're gonna give this a blue, a BG blue of 300. Okay, that's probably too much. So I'll do like a 200. And I think the height was a little bit low. So I'll do 80 pixels, okay. Now we need an input. So let's go ahead and add inside this div. I'll say an input which has a border like this. And then we'll say border blue 100. And I'll just go ahead and so, oh, I need, this needs to be an input, not that. So let's do that. Um, the actual thing here should probably have some padding. We'll do padding of eight and see what happens. Um, and then the actual input itself, maybe we should just make it full width instead. We probably wanna make this flex and we can say, Align center. I think it's called item center actually. Okay, making some progress. Now the background needs to match. I'll see BG blue 100 so that it matches this. And then also it looks like the border probably needs to be um, defined here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Cool. Other than the padding being a little bit much, maybe I'll drop this down to a PX of uh, four and a PY of eight. There we go, if I type in zero, notice that I need to text align this right. So let's just go ahead and say um, text right. We'll say text black as well. There we go. I think this also needs some padding on it. So I'll say padding X of two, padding Y of four. Okay, that's probably too much padding. All right. Now for the buttons, um, let's move on to the next section. I think this looks close enough. I'm not gonna make this like identical, but if you were given like a design from a, an actual like UX or designer, you probably wanna make it as close as possible. I need to use my color picker, make sure my colors are perfect. Let's go down to this part. So I need to make kind of like a grid. Um, I think I just do like a one, two, three, four, five row grid. So down here I'll say grid, grid calls, I think it's four. How many columns do we have? We have one, two, three, four. Okay. And then inside of this, we need to start making some buttons. So like I need a clear button, a slash button, a star button. And for the buttons, um, I'll just go ahead and use a button with a class name. I'll say BG blue of 400 or something and go ahead and just, what was that one called? That was clear. Do a slash, do a star. And then seven, eight, nine minus seven, eight, nine minus four, five, six plus one, two, three equals and the last row is zero and a dot. All right, so now we have a really messed up grid here. I think what we need to do is inside this bottom white panel, we got to add some padding to everything. So I'll go ahead and say like EX of four, PY of four, and see how that looks. And then in between these buttons, we need to say gap of, we'll do, we'll do a gap of four, okay? Um, the buttons need to be rounded. So we need to obviously grab all these buttons 
and we'll say rounded, large, okay. The text inside the button, depending on if it's a period or whatever, we have to kind of center align it. So the way we could potentially do that is we could say flex justify center item center. That should hopefully, unfortunately that did not center the items, justify center item center flex. Okay, I'll undo that part. We won't worry about that right now. Okay, so now the, the text is too large on all of these, so we could potentially just put a text here and say extra small on all the, uh, maybe small. I guess it looks okay. You could say text of blacks to make the buttons all black. Well, I guess some of them aren't actually black, so like the numbers, yeah, I'll make it text white, which was the default, but on certain things, we're gonna go ahead and just make them black. So like the operands, is that, is that what that is? Text black. I don't, I don't think the equals is black, is it? No. Okay, so one thing I noticed is that uh, some grid things take up two cells. I forget how to do that in Tailwind. Let's see if I can do it off of IntelliSense. I think it's like grid. Do I just say like grid calls two? Do I just put that on or something? No, that's not how you do it. I'm not sure how to do that. So let's go and try to look at an example here in Tailwind. Is there a way to do, I think it's like starting end. So you do call span, I think that's what you do. So call span two on the clear button. Nice. And then the only other button that has a two would be the zero. So let's go ahead and go down to the zero. I'll say call span two. Nice. Um, yeah, so now I think for all the buttons, we should probably give them like a, a, a certain fixed height. Let's just go ahead and, um, like in doing the tailwind way, like you could abstract this into a button, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just do the way that tailwind docs recommends. I think 50 might be a little too high. I'll do 40. And I'm going to remove the gap a little bit, make it go down to a two. Okay. So that's not too bad. Um, I think for the input, I'll just say default value is equal to a zero. Might have to make that a string. I think that works. Okay. So now it's like the color. So like the, the numbers and the equal signs are like a darker blue. The clear is, looks like our clear button matches kind of close enough. And then we have the operands or operators. I'm sorry if I'm saying the wrong word. I don't remember what it is. Um, but here we can say BG blue of 200 on the multiplication, subtraction, and addition. Looks good. And then for the center ones, the numbers, let's just go ahead and make this a darker one. So will 600 be enough? Yeah, that was a good guess. So 600. Probably a zero as well, which is down here. And, um, oh, the period. Okay, so where's the period? It's right here. All right, now for the actual height of the entire calculator. Um, let's just reduce it by a little bit. There we go. So, I mean, there you have it. It's a, it's a little bit different. I think the text inside the input, if I go to the input here, I think the text needs to be like a, a media maybe. I think I'm also zoomed in, which doesn't help compare. So definitely text needs to be like small. And then ours is a little bit wider. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the width a little bit. And um, yeah, you can even see like over here, the rounding is messed up now because I think what I need to do is on the blue... On here, I can say overflow. I'm gonna do it at the end. I'll say overflow hidden. No, is that not how you do it? About clip. Yeah, I'm probably putting in the wrong thing. Um, overflow hidden. 
that the one I need to put it on? There we go. And the equal signs. I think the equal signs here needs to be a 600. All right, there you have it. It took me about 14 minutes to build almost the same calculator with a little bit of subtle differences. But I just wanted to kind of challenge myself with, you know, my tailwind knowledge. Obviously, I'd probably come through here and find a way to dry this up potentially. Some of these buttons could potentially be pulled into a shared variable with common classes. Like all of these are kind of common. Um, but for a small component like this, you kind of have to weigh out like, is it worth refactoring into a variable and like you bring in CLSX, which is, I'm sure you guys have heard of that, CLSX. Um, and then I have to basically use some type of shared thing everywhere. So that's it for a calculator. Um, but I mean, they have other options here that I think would be pretty cool. Like for example, a toolbar for a WYSIWYG editor. If you were to paste that, click enter, let's just try that out and see what happens. But it's gonna build your component that you could probably use in a production system um, and the styling looks pretty good. So for someone like me who, I don't like spending a lot of time with building out the widgets and the styling of it. If V0 can build it out for you, that's a big win in my opinion. And then especially if you're kind of already baked into the Next.js ecosystem with Shad CN and Tailwind, it's gonna give you components where the code is gonna look super familiar because this is the stuff that you are basically using all the time anyway, right? And I really like the fact that it gives you some variants and you can actually click them and kind of like ask the prompt to improve it in various ways. I think that was very cool. Anyway, that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me build out this calculator. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to hang out and talk to other developers, the link should be in the description. And like always, have a good day and happy coding.